What's up, gay? And everybody else? Yippee! Yep, back yet again for part two of our mini mini blah, 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 of our mini series. What is it called? <laughs> I went to Japan without a plan. In this episode, we're going to Kyoto, baby. Kyoto is a gorgeous place, and in my opinion, a can't miss stop if you do go to Japan. If you haven't seen part one, go check out my first video where I detail my adventures throughout Tokyo, Japan. Oh my god, soup. I know, you're in heat. I'm not gonna fuck you. No one here is gonna fuck you. Yeah, big baby. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite places that I found. And keep in mind, all these places that I went to, I was able to go to without a plan. I did not have one, not even one single brain cell, what, not even one thought rattling around my skull. So if you're trying to plan a last minute trip to Japan or maybe just want a little bit of extra tips and tricks, go on ahead, hit subscribe so you can see the next video when it comes out. We're going to Osaka. And also a small disclaimer, just like in the last video, I'm not an editor, I'm baby, it's my first day. When you're being mean to me, this is who you're being mean to. New day, different clothes. Now the process of getting to Kyoto, there is a couple things that we did wrong that I wanna help you do fucking right. And if you're asking yourself, well, do I really need to go to Kyoto? I feel like there is enough for me to do in Tokyo alone. And you'd be correct, but it's all about what you want out of your Japan experience. Personally, out of my Japan experience, I wanted a little bit of everything. I wanted a Costco sampler platter of what Japan had to offer. We got the tickets for the Shinkansen. Here, Shinkansen basically just means bullet train it go fast and it go far when traveling with oversized luggage oh my God. there's going to be the back seats with area to stow oversized luggage you have to reserve the seat in advance do your research on that front and just know that you have to plan ahead i said everything i wanted to say do you want to add anything thank you buddy Just like that, two hours later, we're in Kyoto. On our way to our Airbnb, which is actually a traditional machiya house, which just means traditional townhouse. This one just so happened to come with a kotatsu, which was so fire. Also, the staircases in these are so steep, they're a 90 degree angle. But look, we even have an upstairs kind of like vibey chill room. And we had the traditional futons on the floor with the bamboo mats. Once we unpacked and were ready to go, we hauled ass to Nishiki Market where we tried to eat at as many food stalls as we could before they closed because it does close at like 5 p.m. No. I don't know what that is, but it is so good. Fish? I think it is fish. A little bit of mushroom in there. It's really good. We also stopped at a dongo stand and got a nice matcha latte. Honestly, all everything here is very economically priced. I believe that was like $7. This whole stand uh, could kill booty for like $12. But like I said, it does close really early. So about 5 p.m. we were walking out with the sea of humanity. We were kind of just uh, meandering around and found this really cool bridge and street that just had cherry blossoms and the wind kicked up and it was so... <sighs> I'm jealous of her. I want to be her right now. 
this is a little sneak peek at Restaurant Alley, which we're gonna have to come back to because it was too late and most restaurants were closed, except for this really great matcha stand that you need to go to. The person who was pouring the matcha of the soft serve was like, take a picture, take a picture. I'm so glad I did. At this point, it began to rain, um, and not just like cute rain, like ugly rain. Booty almost didn't make it back. I tried my best to distract him to talk about all the fun things we're gonna be doing the next day. And if there's a lesson in any of this, it's bring an umbrella or a really thick jacket. Day to Kyoto. After our breakfast, we decided to go for a walk and we saw this little cafe that looked like it had baller views. So we popped in just to grab a little extra cup of coffee. But I think my favorite part was just ending up in these magical little scenarios. Like this cafe just had a heron that decided to sit and watch us drink coffee while we watched it stare at us while we drank coffee. A great start to a great day. We weren't going just anywhere though. We were walking to the Akasa Shrine, which was actually on the same street as the Mina Misa Theater, the Kabuki Theater. I kind of used that as like my anchor point for understanding where everything was in Kyoto. Once we stepped into the Akasa Shrine, we were just, I mean, overwhelmed with the traditional buildings and shrines, but we realized we were missing something. So decided to fix that. We went to rent kimono I just say that this is not cheap where we went i believe was one of the more affordable spots but ultimately it cost about like 300 dollars to rent these kimono which you can rent them from a period of like from noon to six but it was integral to our trip because do you see this walking the alleys of gion which is the traditional geisha district dressed in kimono was just the most transcendent experience because people were stopping us. People we didn't even know wanted to take our picture. And it wasn't like they were taking it for us. They were doing it for them. They would just take our picture and go walk away like, oh, thank you. Like, what? <laughs> am I a part of the, am I the scenery? The walkway you're about to see next can only be described in about one word. Dang because there are so many tourists getting to the Kiyomizu temple. I do still recommend you come, and hopefully when you come, there'll be less people here. There were so many that Booty and I were a little too discouraged to walk all the way through, so we didn't actually get to see the water part of the water temple. Still, highly recommend you go here, and the shops leading up to it in Senezaka Street are fire. Fortnite balls. Anything else? I have. Okay. We actually had some people from stream recognize us. It was really cool to get recognized in Kyoto, especially in full geesh like that. But so much fun we had. It was time for the walk of shame to return our kimono. From here, we walked back in our civilian clothes to a restaurant that I'm not even gonna tell you guys the name of because we waited in line for 30 minutes to eat at this katsu place because it had a lot of reviews. And what I will say is you do not need to do that when you go to Japan. All the food in Japan is really good. And even though this place had a fun little gimmick, which was you mix up your own sesame seeds to make your own dipping sauce for the food, it just was good. But it was as good as most meals are in Japan. And it was more expensive too. So don't always go where the Yelp reviews take you. But do come here. This was a good recommend from Yelp reviews. It's called Les Ascab... Les Escamoteurs. Escamote. It's a French bar. Um, and they had really cool cocktails that had little magic tricks or gimmicks involved. We had about three each because they were so good. Make sure you get there right when they open though because it's standing room only basically unless you get the bar, which is rare. This is me trying to make sure that I keep my Miu streak. We're trying to get to Arashiyama, probably saying that wrong. We were intent on seeing the bamboo forest. And what we didn't know was we were gonna be seeing a whole lot of heck more. But to get there, you have to take a train and a bus. Super worth it though. You're immediately greeted by just gorgeous townhouses, traditional homes, back streets, and just, it's so quaint. Oh, I, if I could live here, I would. Before you know it, bamboo forest. My one thing about bamboo forest is it wasn't as big as I thought, but I do think that you should go for the culture. You should check it out. It was pretty serene, except for all the fucking tourists. <laughs> That's probably my biggest complaint. 
While we were there, we decided to, again, get lost, and we did. We ended up traveling to this smaller temple that was up a hill about 15 minutes of a walk, and we got to this really amazing udon place that served only vegetarian udon. I was in heaven. It was so soft and pillowy. I'm gonna put the name on the screen because if you can make it here, you should. Again, it was a very small restaurant and so traditional and gorgeous. And the owner here stopped to chat with us for a while. And after we did, she gave us a little orange crane. I think mainly because we were trying so hard to be polite and speak Japanese. And we told her where we were from and she told us where she was from and an unforgettable experience overall. <laughs> Train nerds just cream in their pants right now. Once you leave the bamboo forest and you go straight right down the street, I believe you will get to Togetsukyo Bridge with the most gorgeous view of the mountain and this huge, I don't know what you'd call this, gaping maw of a river. But we were here on a really important mission because I found out just that day that there was a place, a magical place with many steps called Monkey Park. And Monkey Park is not really named uh, correctly in my opinion because this is 160 meters up. It's more like a monkey hike. We were exhausted by the time we got to the top, but dude, oh my God, so worth it. Not just for the view of Kyoto down below, also the giant banana, because there are monkeys walking around doing their monkey thing all up in Monkey Park. It was so amazing to sit here and watch them. You're not supposed to really get close to them. You're not supposed to kneel. You're not supposed to make eye contact. You're supposed to give them lots of space. Of course, people weren't doing that, uh, but I certainly did because I respect the monkey rules at Monkey Park. I think I deserve a monkey medal. I accidentally took a really scenic photo of this couple. I wanted to tell them, but I would have felt really awkward doing it. But as I was standing here by this pond, a whole gaggle of monkeys came and walked up and were just playing in the river next to me. This little baby monkey had this stick that he kept dropping. I know he was doing it on purpose. We did get here a little late. The sun is already setting, as you can see here. So unfortunately, we were only here for about an hour before they kindly told us to skedaddle. But not before I caught a video of this absolute unit. Look at this man. Oh, wait a minute. We're not supposed to leave with the monkeys. You gotta go back. Ooh. <laughs> On the same street where it's the entrance to the bamboo forest and the Tenruji temple, which we did not get to, there's a bunch of tourist shops, little places you can pop in and get a snack. Like this, I don't remember what it was. It was like a glass jelly, like see-through jelly with matcha on top. Mm. It just disappears. Lots of opportunities for snacks on this street, but be careful. A lot of them seem like um, a tourist traps, not in the way that they're bad, just in the way that they were absolutely packed. I farted on a child. <laughs> if you want a personal recommendation from me, um, I don't know the name of this store, but they have a giant cheese stick on display outside of it because they sell giant cheese sticks. They taste like mochi cheese. I don't know what it is, but that's most of the food that you're gonna eat in Japan. Hopefully you don't have any dietary restrictions or you could just do what I did when I visited, which was um, throw caution to the wind. And that reminds me, I left Q&A Yeb in a tree somewhere. Let's go see if we could find her. I wanted to take this moment to respond to some of your questions on last week's video, but let's not do it out here. Come on inside. Much better. I haven't been in my shed so long that nature is starting to take it back. Oh my God, there's two. So let me set the record straight. I realized that I talked about this on my stream where I stream on Twitch. Did you know I stream here on Twitch three days a week? Whoa. And this is where I talked about my plans for going to Japan. The reason I decided that I was going to eat meat when I went is because I didn't want to take away any part of this experience from myself. And it is still my choice now that I'm back in the States to not eat meat. I learned that I don't like steak. Oh, good God, I caught you. Really the only meat that I realized that I really actually enjoyed was prawn. Fucking prawn. I learned a lot about it. Hey, part two. Firecracker wants to know, how long was I practicing Japanese? And do I feel like I got enough practice before I went? 
Is there an earthquake? The simple answer to this question is I did not know I was going to be going to Japan until two weeks before the flight. So I started practicing immediately. And if I could give you any tips, if you're worried about speaking enough Japanese when you go, get the basics down. And after that point, go to Japan and just listen to the way that other people speak to one another. You can look all these things up, but it's so much different when you just hear other people speaking to one another. So if you have any questions after this video here today, feel free to comment them down below. I'm not the bastion of everything Japan. I went once. I don't know everything. But I feel like I did learn a lot while my feet were on the ground while I was there. I can probably answer some pretty basic questions. Anyway, back to Kyoto. I want to look at the alcohol selection at the 7-Elevens. What about the hot dog selections? How about bread with fried noodle? Also a donut with fried noodle. And then there's also corn and mayo. Didn't try these, wish I did. But you see, I was saving space for beer. This specifically is an Earl Grey beer from Kyoto Beer Lab. You should go here if you love beer. If you're looking for a little bit more of an intimate cool spot, check out Rockstock in Kyoto. It is literally an old man's garage. When we walked up to it, we were super confused because it was a home with the garage door open, but it's a real business. And he's got good drinks on tap as well as a really cool ambiance. So if you're looking for a cool little intimate spot to drink, I recommend here. I feel like it would be a crime if I don't mention that when we went to this place, we got there right when it opened at 8 p.m. It was just us and the old man who runs the place, whose house it is. So he was really accommodating with us. Remember how I've been saying that you should definitely go out of your way to practice Japanese with the locals here? This is the one time that didn't really work out the way we had hoped. And by we, I mean Booty, because Booty, he wanted to tell the owner of Rocksteady that the bar was really cool but he kind of forgot the word for cool in Japanese. So instead of saying kakoi, he said, this bar is so kako. So when he said that to the old man, he kind of like uh? twisted his neck a little and a light bulb went off. He realized what Booty was trying to say. So he put his hand on Booty's shoulder and patted him and said, Kakoi, and then kind of walked away. And after some googling, we actually figured out what Booty said was, this bar is so brackets. Ooh. I'm gonna be real, I don't know why I recorded this. I think it was supposed to be like a snack taste test for these pom pom preen egg time chips, but then I got distracted by trying to show off how much tea I drank in one day. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But what I do know is I streamed while I was in Japan, and if you missed it, here's a little taste of what you can get if you were there. We were doing a convenience store taste test of a bunch of snacks. And that stream was the beginning of day three in Kyoto for me. After stream was done, I actually ended it in this really cute park, which was right across the street from this like coffee spot, totally on accident. After that, I walked to the Kinkakuji temple. It's so full. I feel like I keep saying that about every spot we've been to. They had a really cute pass to get in though. A little bit of spoilers on there, but basically the Kinkakuji temple is the golden temple. And when I say that, we just wanted to take a photo, but we couldn't because we would have to elbow our way past all these tours. Like, I, you can see I'm not exaggerating. But if you just walked like a couple feet ahead, there was a big empty space where I was able to take all these shots. I don't know, man. Tourism is interesting. There was these really cool nature moments, though, with this like little babbling brook and uh, this like mysterious cavern. I don't know what was there, if anyone can read Japanese. But dude, once you're done doing the tour of this place, I highly recommend taking the little pit stop on the right to a little tea garden. You get matcha and this sugar cube. It has these like gold leaves in it. Separately, they would be hard to digest, but together it was this perfect marrying of bitter yes. and sweet in your mouth. And I mean, not to mention just, you know, being able to look at the garden while you're doing this. I just, you could see it on my face. I'm having a great time. From here, we took a rather long bus to the Kyoto Aquarium. And I don't know what I was expecting, but as soon as you walk in, dude, there's just these dinosaurs called Chinese salamanders, I believe they were. They're so cool and they're my absolute favorite animal that we saw in the aquarium that day because they don't do shit. There was also this really cute photo op moment where you could kind of sit in this alcove with seals I really enjoyed hanging out and just watching them go in loop-de-loops. If 
you're a penguin lover, they also had a really fat penguin exhibit. Like, the penguins weren't fat, the exhibit was fat. Look at this fucking guy nestling up to her. Oh, to be a penguin in a Japanese zoo. I think he was trying to f Sadly, this was the only gachapon um, we did while we were in Japan. Um, not so sadly, though. I got the exact one that I wanted from here. You'll never guess what it was. Let's see if you can guess. Write in the comments down below what you think I wanted to get. Did you say Chinese salamander? Because that was the correct answer. So after we were done at the aquarium, we took a walk, baby. We were trying to get to Restaurant Alley. If you remember correctly, I mentioned earlier in the video, we wanted to go here and there's a reason for that because it's literally a narrow alleyway just filled with delicious restaurants and bars. Also, I took this video because this woman in front of me was wearing such a fiendish trench coat and I started counting how many ladies I saw in trench coats from this point on. Maybe it was trench coat night in Kyoto and nobody told me because I saw 14. Uh, after this, we went to Underbar, which is not a place I re necessarily recommend. But dude, while we were here, we just had the funniest time because they were playing the same song over and over again in karaoke and the people in the back were absolutely slaying it. And that, my friends, was our last night in Kyoto. Join us for next week when we go to Osaka. Now watch this draft. <laughs>